Wanderers, welcome to episode number one four zero. What? One four zero. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Jumping Jacks Entertainment. Hey, Smoke. Yeah. Who doesn't enjoy having fun? Nobody. Hey, Big Mace. <laughs> Go ahead. Who doesn't enjoy the fact that their kids are having fun at a party and not hanging all over you or the warden? Not me. Take your party to the next level by contacting Jumping Jacks Entertainment in Huntingburg. Fully licensed and insured, Jumping Jacks can provide you with the latest and greatest in bounce houses, water slides, tents, tables, chairs, concessions, and more. With over 50 inflatables to choose from, Jumping Jacks has something for everyone. Jumping Jacks will take care of the delivery, setup, teardown, pickup, and cleaning. Call, text, or book online today at jumpingjacksentertainment.com. Use coupon code DUTCHMAN, D-U-T-C-H-M-E-N, for half-price concession machi- machine rental with any inflatable or tent rental. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast coming to you from Smoker's Lounge. Lounge. Yeah. Here we go. That's a little late to the party. Hey, fellas, good news. Oh, let's hear it. We have just had a baby. That's right. 40 weeks. 40 weeks. Or an entire school year for most academic places. Uh, you know, four quarters of 10 weeks. Okay, Dave. Uh, we had a baby, Mace. I'll be damned. A we little, had a baby eats a boy. Bob, Bob we had a baby eats a boy. <laughs> Nine pounds, eight ounces, 30... Full of glizzies and brewskis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Wandering Dutchman podcast is officially 40 <laughs> weeks old. We're, yeah. There was one week that... We done gestated a human. Yeah. Unreal. Our wives would be proud. So anyways, we're here. It, for point of reference, today is July 27th, 2023. There was just a congressional hearing in regards to UFOs where some guy under oath testified. I cannot wait. That we hour one. <laughs> have. Oh, oh boy. Well, I don't want to take anything away from it. Um, we'll just move on. Yeah, we'll just move on. So, uh, Mace, <laughs> what do you got going on? Well, folks at home, it is officially La Miserable outside. Are you talking about the French play? No, I'm talking about the French pancake crepe batter (laughs) that was running down my legs the last couple days. Oh, gosh. Frothy, huh? It's disgusting outside, guys. I almost put a post online today saying that if you enjoy the weather outside as it is right now... I don't think we could be friends. Like I, I you if know, you what I don't mean? chew big red gum, then f you, you know. <laughs> but I, I just, man, it is, it is terrible outside. Like I feel for people that are misfortunate and don't have air conditioning, and I feel it's just the the Ohio Valley at this current state is O H V. It is disgusting to live in this area right now. But muggy, the corn loves it. The grass loves it. The corn, corn makes, makes whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey makes, makes man frisky. Whiskey. Yeah, so the corn is absolutely uh, like doubling in inches by the hour, I believe. Like yeah, I'll is, tell you what, the only thing higher than the corn is Willie Nelson. Unbelievable. Like it, yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, wow. I don't know, though. Some of that, uh, I don't know what. It, so Cesar and I seen some today that was, it was, uh, it was taller than the gutters on a house. 
and and it it was it's that Hispanic uh, native corn that they get from the mother. Now you got to watch that; it's going to clog the gutters up. Well, it wasn't in the gutters; it's taller than the gutters. Well, but then the wind blows. Oh yeah, yeah. the wind blows. Hey, smoke's going to be on one tonight. Yeah, I love yeah, it. yeah, I've had a few. Fans okay. are going to love it. It's a good day. You know what Janelle told me? She looked me straight in the eye and she said, "You know, they're working on being able to put three years of corn on a corn stalk." Mm-hmm. And I go. Hashtag GMO. I go, really? She goes, yeah, that's it's it's where science is going. Well, they're going to have to. Or we're all going to start. Could you imagine yeah. what we'd look like with three years? <laughs> well, some people do because they'll regrow them in their arms. So, because if they have wild happen, yeah. bananas, we don't uh, eat that corn that's produced around here. That's all feed. Last Friday, we played glow golf. Mm. Yeah, how was it? <laughs> and that was a hoot. We showed up, me and Mace and the and the and the brides there, and we. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know we were on the leaderboard. It was a uh, at the bottom. It was a real hoot nanny. <laughs> it was a real hoot nanny. We were chasing geese, hitting bombs, uh, <laughs> potentially. Uh, Had a big old speaker strapped on top of the old golf bucket. I, when it, I first saw the photos, I thought you. You strapped a cooler up there. No, no, it was a golf. It was a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Well, Glow Ball's known to kind of let your hair down in the golfing community. The hair was down. Yeah. So, la- starting out last the week with with that, you know, Glow Golf was for last Friday. It was kind of in the last week. Uh, Saturday, soccer season has officially begun. Hey, by the way, uh, Smoke and I want to talk to you about something. Okay. We were there at practice on Tuesday. If you're bitching about shade, it'll never happen. No, we're not going to bitch about shade. We're going to talk just about the playing surface. We felt like the grass was a little tall. I mean, our teams are built for speed. Well, And with that grass that we could bail out there, we need to cut it. Short legs. We need to cut it a little bit more. It hadn't been mowed since. So the other night when you guys were at practice, which would have been what? Sunday. Tuesday. 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 (laughs) Where the hell are you, Dave? Good grief. (laughs) Uh, it hadn't been mowed since the previous Friday. I remember you mowed on Friday because yeah, we had so, glow golf. And we had a lot of rain. Lots know, of rain. In between then and now, and a lot of humidity. So that grass is predominantly crab grass, and that shit grows like wall far when, wall it's, far. when it's humid there. But other than that, uh, it's hotter than piss. Soccer season started. Had a good time playing glow golf. Um, mowing. I'm getting ready to. We're painting, you know, got to paint, mow. Um, I just pushed up my imaginary glasses. I ain't wore glasses in over a year. But. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> Dave, uh, we're going to get you to this end of this episode. But the funny thing is, is uh, I wanted to say one thing, but I totally lost my train of thought. That's my fault. But it's okay. And uh, Smoke Dog, what's up with you, bud? Well, Glow Golf was great. Hunting Bird Country Club put on a hell of a... Our friend Teddy Hoops. Yeah, they had a hell of a shindig ready for everybody. And that was a really good time. Then me and the missus woke up, and we took the kids to Meemaw and Peepaw's house. Mm-hmm. Oh. First thing in the morning, we went down to Ohio River with friends of the show, the Ritters, down there on Ritter Camp on the Ohio River. Which, by the way, I'm glad you added context to the picture, because I had no idea who that was. Yeah, that's, 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 that's Ms. Mrs. Ritter there. And we, well, hi, Ms. Hey, shout out Mrs. Ritter. And we had a hell of a good time there. It was an almost no qualms day on the river. Beautiful. And uh, then Sunday was just a nice, slow day, a little bit of mowing. And uh, right into a pretty big thunderclapper of a storm there. Yeah, we did. I mean, Mm -hmm. need to borrow the old tractor to kind of grade that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Lost the internet for a couple days here on the hill. Been pretty rough. Yeah. But I got it fixed. Well, there were some worries about getting Mm. last Friday's show out. Mm -hmm. We got it, though. Good. So it's been a real good week. Lots of lots of busyness. Lots of running around. Lots of fun having Uh, having it. Got it. Uh, So right after last week's episode there of, uh, you know, percentage of time recreating, I'd say this last weekend I was 65 to 70 percent. It was probably one of my more... Recreating weekend, enjoyable weekend. Other than like playing golf on Friday, and then I I got my work done Saturday afternoon with the soccer field, and it was so hot, and 
disgusting and everything out that day. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It's was actually not that bad <clears throat> last, last weekend. Mm. And then Saturday, Justine ended up getting coming down with a little bit of a bug. Mm, and she bunk. got Yeah, she got sick and everything like that. Teas and peas. Yeah, teas and peas for real. So teas and peas. We went over, I went over to Monty's Pizza in Ireland and picked up two big old pies over there. They got you stopped by and see our friends pizza. there, the Merkley boys. Well, there was actually a member of their squad at Monty's oh, when shoot. I was there. Shout we out gotta to our get buddy. them back on the list. We've been shout, talking about. Shout out guys. to our buddy Eric G. He was hanging oh, out. Oh, Eric! Yeah, Eric. He was hanging in the back with old uh, Squig back there, kicking out the pies. I tell you what, we didn't even mention it. We seen old uh, John Boy. John Boy. Out John Boy. There. And I, his saw, bride. I saw. I saw pictures, pictures of John Boy yeah. and his bride. They were playing golf. Well, that's good. Yeah, glad they ventured over. Hell of over. a good time. Yeah. Real that's good. good. But other than that, thanks for the invite, guys. It was a nice. Uh, yeah, we did, but you were already <laughs> busy, so it's okay. No, literally had nothing going on. Yeah. You never asked. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Because you weren't invited. I know. And that it was hurts. a it was a bride it was our wife thing. Oh. And There's have you ever, my you, wife don't count? Well, it's, you ever played, it's you not ever a played with a six them? I once. Oh. Wild. Michigan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Must have been in your college days. All right there, uh Nancy Pants. How was your week? Well, I think the first we got thing's a scholar first. here, boys. We got a first, scholar. First things first. I just want to say to the folks at home, folks at home, we are recording on a traditional Thursday. Woo! And we haven't done That's because stats is in the bag, baby. Yeah, stats is done. Stats is done. Officially one tenth of the way to my NBA. <laughs> nice. Uh, super excited. Uh, Baby's coming real good and handy when yeah. this show takes off. Yeah. 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 Stats worked out well. I appreciate all the T's and P's. Uh, passed with flying colors. Um, really happy how it worked out. I hadn't worked that hard in a long time on something, and then I really I got kind of you back. still got it. Well, I got back in that old groove, and my wife was like, "Who is this monster?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Just tearing up, honey. That this is paper. this is law school, Casey. You're going out there. I'm hunting for grades, trying to do well. That dog. I had that dog. I got that stats dog in me. But uh, yeah, that week where I complained about homework and project and final exam, and it all worked out. And uh, it's been weird this week because the other night. I legitimately practiced putting in the bedroom for like an hour because I had nothing to do. You went for a walk last night. Well, I'm back on the walking kick. Nice. So I'm, I need I'm, to get on that. I'm lifting and walking because uh, I'm trying to, uh, well, uh, if you work at Holland Family Medical, uh, i.e. your Dr. Ryan Flamian or Jan Luker, you might want to turn off right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm less than 90 days away from the old annual physical. Yikes. And so I'm trying to make a good last-ditch effort. Start eating the uh, Cheerios. Yeah. Get them cholesterol points down. And, yeah. Uh, so we don't need to come on walk with you because we drink beer well. Yeah, well. that's our problem there. But, uh, yeah, so the, Janelle goes, why? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> why are you, what are you going for a walk? I told her Sunday night. I was like, <laughs> lacing up my shoes. She's like, are you guys recording tonight? And I was like, well, one, I wouldn't tie my shoes to come record. But, two, no, I'm going for a walk. And she's like, Why? And I was like, 90 days is uh, You're gonna physical. You're going to walk in in case going to be mainlining Metamucil. <laughs> <laughs> but the other tough thing of it is, is when we head to that swamp land. Oh, you got to get your beach bod ready. I got it. Well, no, 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 no. Not I've been even. working on my beach tan. I'm still fat. I just got to get some sun under that. Not, oh, not yeah. even that. Under it's just... It's just that my physical is about two weeks after that. So, <laughs> yeah, you got cast a shadow on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's, uh, but it's all okay. Stats, the first one's done. <laughs> I've got about a month off and then get started back again. So, um, you know, it's just uh, the support. Janelle's been great. Uh, kinda, She's a sweetheart. She is. Kind of hard getting back into it because I haven't been in the classroom in about 10 years. Well, you, you, you still, still haven't got, been in the classroom. Uh, that's true. You it's called into online. it. Yeah. yeah, all online. But it's uh, it's been good. So uh, I'm just happy to be done. Happy to be here. Oh, hell yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because when this comes out, uh, there's an option to go to uh, Zor. That's what I was getting ready tonight. to say, boys and girls, boys and no, girls, when folks they, at home. Oh, yeah, tonight, and then yeah. tomorrow afternoon, and then tomorrow yeah. night. That's right. Yeah, and because here's the other thing. We might have got a little taste of the ice cream. Yeah. And you've probably already watched yeah. that clip. Yeah, you definitely if you're, would have already if you're seen a wonder, it. you've already seen it. If you haven't already seen it, then get your shit together. And I think, right. you know, all three of us aren't out together very often. No. 
But I think, well, because it's kind of like the president and the vice president yeah, can really never be together. Right. Like, if we lose one leg of this tripod, like, you know, it's tough to replace one yeah. of us. Right. I mean, where can you find... But how would you replace all three of us? Yeah, that's true. I guess Arlo would just take over. Yeah. It's he like a hand grenade. You don't want to be too close. Yeah. yeah. Wipe them all out. But I think we're all three going to be... At the Zora Mosquito Fest. Where are we going to be? The, the Zora Mosquito Fest. It's the 51st annual Celebrating 51 years, the Zora Mosquito Fest happening on Friday, August the 4th, and Saturday, August the 5th at the Zora United Methodist Church located on Old State Road 64 in beautiful downtown Zora, Indiana. This jam-packed weekend full of fun includes wiffle ball, chicken, pork chop dinners, Burgers, fish, sandwiches, live music, kids' games, homemade ice cream, which we know is good, and so much more, we can't even list it all. Starting at 5 p.m. on Friday evening, the food booths open, barbecue chicken and fr- barbecue and fried chicken dinners will be served, opening ceremony and opening prayers at 6.30, along with a wiffle ball tournament, live music, and we'll be... F- Will be for, they will be performed by a band called Last Call that will start at 7 p.m. All kinds of time to go down and watch some wiffle ball, eat some nice fish sandwiches, and uh, enjoy the mosquitoes and awesome fellowship. Head down and, to Zor and tell them the Dutchman. And we've talked about things that we fear will be lo- we lose in small communities. And those folks over there, after talking to uh, Regan tonight, like she's put in a lot of work yeah. to oh, get yeah. ready. A lot and of people put, a, yeah, put in a lot of work to get ready, go out, support. And that, that group playing on Friday night, Last Call, featuring my buddy Dave Harner from French Lake Resort, they play good old classic country. They, they, they're good. We'll head over. And there. we'll be there. We will be there. We'll make it happen, Kevin. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Right into our one, big guy. Well, as Casey was saying, I already am going to allude towards my topic. But I'm, I'm going to generalize and broaden the spectrum by asking a question to you two, my bestest friends. Oh, thanks, buddy. What is one bit of truth that you think could potentially change the course of history. The fact that we were probably never on the moon. Oh, boy, Dave. Okay. (laughs) Okay. That's fine. Casey, do you have one? I know it's a very deep question. And we're going to spin more into going to space. But if you don't want to go... I mean, do you even want me to participate? Yes, but if you don't want to go to space first, then we'll just... I want you to go where you want to go. I think if we had the nitty-gritty truth... I thought you were going going dirt band. band. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, the nitty-gritty truth of, like, the founding of this country. Oh, okay. See, I didn't Mm. think you were going there either. Oh, where do you think I was going? Uh, Afterlife. I figured that's where he was going. Yeah, that's what I figured you were All the bloodbath on the starting this country. Yeah. Uh, but I think, like, if we fig- if, like, how... Oh, you thought he was going this way? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. it, it, it's here's, not pretty. Here's, here's where I'm at, is how on God's green earth do you take a bunch of European rejects, mm-hmm. ship them over to a rock here in... And uh, then the rejects kick out the locals and steal their turkeys they and came their over, corn. They came over on the Pinta and the mean and the Nina. I'm telling you what, the that, American the American fun. dream is just that, and I get all fired after think about it. It's like, but, hey, you're not good enough for us, and then we came here, and then they were like, we're gonna tax your tea there, fella, and we're like, oh, you are there, mammy. That's what we told the queen. We called her mammy. Yeah, and we threw all her tea in the harbor. That's right. And then we spent however many years just at kicking ass and taking, taking names. names. Amen. And but here we are having <laughs> podcasts on a Thursday. <laughs> Being American. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think Sorry, I'm I would, up. because you have the old stories of like the Knights of the Templar and some of those things. Well, but. Spooky. Well, if you, t- no, if you get you. watching, into, if, 
that Dave's peaked right now because he knows <laughs> I'm dipping my toes He's in Dave's waters. He's peaking. <laughs> oh, no. Just wait. I'm getting ready to do a oh, cannonball no. yeah, in Dave's sure. waters. But I think, like, if you knew, like, was George Washington really that good of a dude? Did or? he really have wooden teeth? No, he didn't. That's already been disproven. They were ivory. They would have been ivory. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is, like, how on God's green earth do we make it Was Johnny happen? Appleseed a real guy? You know what? I already... He was, but he wasn't Johnny Appleseed. I said the wrong thing when you asked me what truth would change the course of American history. No, well, it's not, not American, American history. It's oh, history. Just, okay. just history in general. If I, here's what... Helen Keller. <laughs> 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 yep, fired up. I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you could go into a deeper thing. Like, could go deeper, but like the founding of our country... Was it really just like a scapegoat for some people to hide their misdeeds and it ends up like you keep the lie on forever? And Oh, George Washington definitely did some sketchy shit to get over here in the first place. I mean, you had, like, you never hear about Yeah, we were, we, they sent the prisoners here. Like, oh, hey, you scum, get over there. He was probably a real sketchy cat. But you then reckon? it all works out. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. That's kind of what being American's all about. Like, hey, we're all... <laughs> And I think the other Not thing great, too, but we can be good together. Yeah, and this is unity. I, I think yeah. the other thing too that would be maybe unity. another good one is like who really killed JFK? Like, oh wow, that assa- the, behind the assassination of some of those people. Assassination. You got to watch out for them conspiracy theories. Yeah, get you on a list. Well, yeah. why haven't they released all the documents? Well, because, like that's how many years uh, pretty ago. Pretty big finger pointing at the pretty big. Uh, they watch. They they point. They uh, release the video of his brains blown all over the trunk, but they can't <laughs> release anybody on the old grassy knoll up there. Okay, tell us, brother. You ever heard of a guy named David Grush? Mm-hmm. Have you whistleblower? I. They just had a public hearing there yesterday. I, could, I watched up on my lunch break. <laughs> giving Mr. Kimball all this I time. I could not be any more jacked up boys because like i have like since i didn't think you were going to have internet so i literally screenshot about <laughs> 50 different things <laughs> to read but for all of you folks at home that are not listening or that are listening now that haven't really kept up with the current news in june of 2023 united states air force officer and former intelligence agent david grush Publicly discl- publicly claimed that an unmanned, unnamed officials told him that the U.S. federal government maintains a highly secretive UFO re- recovery program and is in possession of non-human spacecraft and dead pilots. I was going to say non-human biologics. Nine, hu- non-human biologics. But how do you define non-human biologics? Something okay. Well, you, I, I guess it could be a gazelle, but I don't think that's what he was alluding to. But that's the question, though. That is vague that's enough. What, that's what people are. Uh, that's where they're discrediting his topic. He, they're discrediting him, discrediting him by saying he's not being. Um, he he lacks speci- how you say specificity. It? Specificity. That's what that's that's one of the biggest. Uh, and he does claim that he's doing it because he's in a current whistleblower contract. Well, protection. Protection. Well, there's laws that protect whistleblowers. And, yes, uh, and that's and what he's it is. He's got some pretty extreme. Um, Here's <laughs> he's pointing some pretty stiff fingers at people for the. The actions that have been taken against him and his yeah, life. They, they asked, he, they, the one senator asked him if he felt as if his life was ever threatened. And he was like, almost oh, certainly, yes. Here's what I'm going to throw out there. I'm going to go a little bit deeper here. And Dave, you'll appreciate this. What's actually really going on for them to lead this clown out to say this stuff to distract what's really happening? Yeah. The problem, so and I've seen a lot of chatter on the face space about that, like, oh, well, this is only going on because they're trying to cover up something different. But what's her name? Uh, can't think of her name. She published a, an article that was in the New York Times in 2017. That's the one, yes. I, yes, I watched that. And that's the only thing I got going. So everybody's like, oh, well, they're doing this because of that. But this has been going on and kind of happening now for about five years. April, what did it say? April of... Uh, 2017. Yeah. 
And and that's when that thing came out. That's that, when they that's when they actually the government it, so what it, that was is they said they had a program Blue Book. Well, no, no, no. Wasn't Blue Book? They closed Blue Book, and we thought they were doing nothing. They admitted that there was a program since Project Blue Book that was still ongoing where they were researching these, uh, what they now call UAPs, un, uh, uh, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Yes. Yeah. So now it's not a normal UFO. It's no, a, we can't call it that. It's a Unidentified or unknown aerial, aerial phenomenon. I was going to say, you didn't have an A when you went through yours. Yeah. yeah. Here's what I'm going to say. Oh, boy. This stuff has been going on forever in one fashion or another. You could probably reach back every 20 or 25 years, find somebody that's come out and said this or said that and do this and do that, and it still hasn't amounted to a hill of beans. If we don't know or haven't had the things released from... Me? Uh, Put it down. Well, I'm just reading. I'm just kind of oh, okay. It's checking to the topic. It's but if we to the topic. if we didn't have like if we going back to my mention of JFK and the assassination, if they haven't released all that stuff, you're never even if there is something going on, you're never going to find out. It is meant to throw a little breadcrumb out there for the pores, <laughs> and by pores I mean all feeding of the us, chickens, feeding the chickens to just be distracted by something else that's going on. There's nothing that's going to come out of it. Until push comes to shove, and that they have to release more because so I the think subject is being that's forced. that's what this one here says. I think the best one is is that he Grush also claimed that there is substan substantive evidence, either substantial or. S Substantive. 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 Substantive evidence that white collar crime took place to conceal UFO programs and that he had interviewed officials who said that people had been killed to conceal, conceal their programs. I feel like the CIA has been offing people for years oh, that yeah. know shit We've about shit. You, oh, yeah, this yeah. goes back to the Tea Party. Oh, we killed the old, people uh, for a lot less than may say, you remember the old Epstein deal? You know, like, hey, uh, he didn't hang himself. You know, remember now, that whole and world? Now, you could convince me that maybe there's something else going on and we're just trying to capture the the. I don't know, dude. Watching those videos and listening. The thing listen. is, there's definitely something. To me, there's definitely enough evidence to prove that there was more to look into. Yeah, because it was like they're... they're, they're uh, their movements where boy. they went. He said it was they were they were literally sitting completely at zero knots, zero mock, mock, zero mock, zero mock, and and they were in hurricane in, winds, in, in like a hundred and forty knot winds, which is gale force hurricane winds, and they would move completely unscathed by the wind turbulence, like they could just. It was insane, dude. Like it nutty, nutty. To where like these seasoned, tenured pilots. Well, in that, uh, I think I mentioned. I don't know if it's during the episode or not, but uh, National Geographic released a episode or like a small whatever. You yeah, call I watched it. it. Yeah, I and, watched uh, Chicago O'Hare. Yeah, and there was just some disc floating in the sky, yeah. and they grounded all the flights for three hours. Yeah, and then nobody heard of it. Oh yeah. no, that never happened. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely... Like Casey said, I feel like they know that this shit's been going on for a long time. But they I think don't... Casey's point is that we've been saying it for a long time. But I, I don't think, think Casey believes I think that's happened. what I think well, that's where I tie my topic in by saying what bit of truth will potentially change the course of history. Because if they came out... What if you find out that the Cave of Skulls was extraterrestrials? Right. The Cave of Bones? Did it you watch is, it? Yeah, I did. Dude. <laughs> I've watched all those unknowns since you brought it up. I know, week. man. So so this cave that they found in in South Africa. We Little people. We talked about it last week. You know, like. Yeah. And it was like, like uh, this is crazy. I don't know why. I, I, I'm on this funk. You know what I mean? This whole rabbit hole, drink the Kool-Aid type thing. But they, there's just all kinds of just nutty shit. And like they're finding things like, like they said, the tool. Like they found a tool, and these people cave these, carvings, these cave carvings and stuff were over two hundred fifty to three hundred twenty-five thousand years old, and they had a fire. There was like 
fire evidence. There's fire evidence. And that is that is like however many thousands of years. The oldest known Homo sapien or whatever was like, like 120,000 years. Right. And this is almost 150,000 years older than that. And they said that they found an actual rock in the hand of, in the hand of a dead body or skeleton that it looked like had been carved into a tool, which completely changes... The entire perception perception of of like Homo sapien history. I think that's what, like, if this alien, oh, man. I'm telling you, like, you, I know you think that we're reading no, too far no, into it, but no, like, no, for, no, for, no, for, no, for no, the no. one or two weirdo wonders, there's out there more than one are, or two. There's been things like, hey, maybe this should be its own show. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, go like, ahead and find my tin foil hat. <laughs> Me and Smoker will be in go here. Go ahead, tin find foil time hat. for that one. Casey will be back here poking us with sticks, you know. But <laughs> I, I think it's, I think this shit's pretty wild, and I, I bet you there's a lot of people that may dabble a lot more than. But I, I, <laughs> I, space I, is you're, so big. Your, your, your initial question has a lot of great other things to it. No, oh, yeah, for yeah, sure, like absolutely. the afterlife, like. Yeah, you can go into a lot of that. What's stuff. it like being like? Maybe dogs really can talk, or you know, who knows? But I just, <sighs> fellas, I love it. I support you guys. I love you too. Uh, ride or die. But um, <laughs> you know, the way I look at it is, does it affect me going to work tomorrow? No. Does it affect my Not family yet. tomorrow? Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Not tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> when they when they're knocking on my door. And they're taking over Earth. Then we'll have that conversation. When you see a little a bunch of little brainiac dudes with with their heads and glow, <laughs> and they start talking like that, then we know you better bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, let's change the gears to something we can all get behind. Uh, yeah, let's uh, supper clubs. Let's talk about supper clubs. What the hell is this? Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't, don't you, you know. know? Up in Wisconsin, don't they talk got about you don't know yeah, about no Wisconsin up there. Supper Wisconsin, club. Wisconsin, they got some supper clubs. I'm bringing a, I'm bringing a casserole. I've been working all day on this casserole. No, that's not a supper club. It's all new to me. So I saw it on. Uh, it might have been TikTok or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Are we starting LinkedIn. a supper club? Well, like no supper. So there's a business or company in Wisconsin. Huge fan of supper. And they do a it's a supper like it's like a restaurant, but they don't call it a restaurant, they call it a supper, supper club. club. And they've got a certain set menu for the day. You come in, you push start. You, oh. mm. you come in and you just I mean, they got a set menu of maybe a couple things and it varies and it changes up, but it's like a Real casual, like it's I would more, definitely go on meatloaf night. It's more like yeah. going. It's more like going to like a country club and hanging out, and then like dinner is like you know they got the appetizers, they've got mm -hmm. your courses and all that other stuff. But it really got me thinking. One, I've never ever been to a supper club. We should start one. And two, like I really think it's a freaking genius idea. Yeah. But it really, I mean, you're open on the weekends for dinner. And you, for based what? around th for for supper for supper, what do you mean? dinner's lunch, yeah. But I don't know. I just I saw it and I was like, "A has anybody ever been to a supper club?" No, but I'm a social social. Fella. A supper club is a traditional dining establishment that also functions as a social club. Hmm. The term may describe different establishments depending on the region, but in general, supper clubs tend to present themselves as having a high-class image even if the price Ooh. is affordable to all. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, then I'm in. Yeah. yeah. It makes it hoity-toity for those that are you know, not maybe, so hoity toity. Yeah, not so hoity. Well, but it, it's just kind of, it's not a chain. You know, it's a mom and pop shop. But I just, I fell in love with the when idea. When you go to a supper club, do you think you get in a line like with a tray? No, 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 no. Oh, or is somebody special, brings you your meat. It's, is still, it, it's, like it's a still like a regular dining experience. You order from a menu, or is nope, it just, I think you, you, get just what you get, you get what they have? What yeah, the there's, probably, there's probably a couple options, and then you just oh, go really? from there. I'm going to oh. see if I can find that. You guys chat for a second. Oh, like chicken or beef, probably. Well, that's like when you go to a wedding, they ask you if it's chicken or beef. I, I bet it's similar to that. For all you not watching, just listening, I'm sorry. I'm loading my cup up with ice so I can pour me another. 
Where did that ice come from? Celebration ice, which uh, they've got a brand new uh, contract. Unbelievable! Yeah. The Indiana State University Sycamores. Nice Good work. night. Congratulations. That's a that's a big deal. Our that's buddy a big Mike, break. our buddy Mark, and his his wife and their cronies and everybody else over there at our friend. Cronies sounds negative. Cronies? What do you mean? It just sounds negative. My daughter said that she knew what jabroni meant today. Was she watching The Rock and the Attitude Area? <laughs> okay, so know. here it is. The most famous supper club in Wisconsin is at the Ishala, Ishala Supper Club. Ishala. The most iconic supper club in Wisconsin. <laughs> Prime rib spears stuffed with asparagus as an appetizer. Oh, my. They're amazing. What? She a prime rib stuffed asparagus, asparagus no. spear? Asparagus in the prime rib. Located in the center of or Lake prime State rib Park. In the asparagus. That would be tough. <laughs> It'd be hard to stick a cow in a plant. Yeah, but they have cocktails and like they're hanging out. I just I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Should we start a supper What's club? What's that one up there at uh Mooresville or Martinsville? Gray Brothers, that cafeteria. <laughs> oh. Hey, one of our wonders asked us about this, but there's a place in Hagerstown back in my old neck of the woods called Willivers. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, a buffet. Court and Schwartz. Okay, I know somebody. Yeah. You might consider that a supper club. It was kind of a happening place to be where people meet up on a regular basis. Yeah. I just think I'm all in on the idea. Yeah, it's great. Let's start a supper club. Well, it's a different menu. You got cocktails, you got beers, you got people hanging out. I feel like that's a place where you wear jeans, a button down, and a a sport coat. Here, look at what they're wearing. Very cash. Very cash. Yeah. Oh, my. So we need a wandering Dutchman supper club. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Wonders, how many of you would show up to the Wandering Dutchman Supper Club religiously every Wednesday and Sunday? Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. if we had a Wednesday Supper Club and then we had a... Sunday bingo. Like a Sunday brunch club. Mm. Ooh. God, I love brunch. <laughs> After church, but, you know, some, yeah, if, you know... Strap on the feed sacks between eleven and two. Yeah, if you wanted, her down uh, at three. if you wanted uh, chicken and waffles, or if you wanted uh, eggs Benedict, or if you wanted uh, like a good a quiche, chicken ranch wrap, a good quiche, a quiche or, or a chicken ranch wrap. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> never know. God. God, pulling the reins a little bit. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, no, I'm all in on supper club. It just seems I like it's that cafeteria. I know I say like you go through a line mm, with the tray. Cafeteria, I like that's it. what I said. Like that Gray Brothers cafeteria, like that cafeteria dining situation. That whole uh, the old, uh, you know, like that 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 vibe that you get where you literally go through. Yeah, and they either uh, you know you you get charged by the weight of your plate or. Uh, how many trips you go or something like that? Like I would be, uh, I just screwed. Think, I just think it supper club is that concept of the little things in Americana mm. Mm. that you lose mm. in some places. This and I is think a West, perfect county for a supper club. And I think the West Canson people. Well, you know, we could I've probably some, host a supper club and not have to own a supper club. We could probably do it at like one of these places you rent out in Huntingburg. Yeah. And just do a hey, buy your tickets ahead. We could talk to our friends at Catering by Meyer. And then we could do a supper club and then say, hey, once oh. a month, we're going to do the Wandering Dutchman Supper Club. Come on out. We hang out, have supper. Oh, Play boy. some music. That would be awesome. Small little dance floors. So. Well, because you got to burn them calories off before dessert. Guys, mm. this is... This is a dangerous vodka idea. talking, but I think this is a hell of an idea. <laughs> I like supper. And I like clubs. And I like clubs. And so if you put the two together, mm. big fan of them. I just, I, I guess it was it was a TikTok. So I saw the TikTok and uh, I'm just all for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all so, in. I wonder, I wonder if there's any supper clubs near us. There's definitely not. You don't think? That's got to be like a northern swing thing. I bet the Youpers, I bet they have them. I bet they got them up there in the yeah, cheesehead world. I imagine, you know, there's quite a few months out of the year where there's just nothing. I guarantee it. When, you, when I said casserole earlier and you said no, I guarantee you, you could find a badass casserole at a supper club. Oh, f- man, I tell you what. I if love it's a, on the menu. I'm a food mixer. I love a casserole. Yeah. Duh. 
If you don't like casseroles, then you can go pound sand. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you don't like casseroles, then, then F you. you. I'm, not a, I'm not a casserole guy. Oh, God. That doesn't surprise me a Not bit. one bit. I tell you what, you yeah. non-sandal-wearing casserole back-turning <laughs> pieces. By the way, I had a thought of actually buying some Birkenstocks. Uh, for SGI? No, no. Just, what, burning them or something? <laughs> no, I I actually thought about buying a pair because they look so comfy. Oh, yeah. Well, they're and not it, comfy at Oh, first. no, they suck ass the first couple times you wear them. But if you let me finish oh, here, yeah, yeah. I went to go trim my toenails, and I was like, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> I looked at him, and I said, ain't nobody want to see those. For all you wonder, Boom. me and Mace are sitting here uh, barefoot. Boom. <laughs> That's the that's the toenail grinder that Casey's oh, getting ready here's, to Oh, here's out. the thing of it. What's the difference between a supper club and a restaurant? Do you know? No. Probably the amount of people. Restaurants are meant to be seen as destinations. At other restaurants, you arrive, place your order, eat, and leave. But supper clubs are meant for people who aren't in a hurry. Yes! And want to make an evening out of their outing. Well, I'm out. Which well, makes out. sense for rural areas. Rural. Where the drive to get there may be longer. And you have a little dance floor. You got some socializing. Dude, you know how lucrative. You have a little drink counter up there. You know how lucrative this could be. I guarantee we if we start a supper club. We need to shut everything down right now and quit talking about it. I, I, I'll cut it out if you tell me to. It's a place to enjoy beep. drinks. It's like multiple a 17 courses, minute beep. Dessert and perhaps some music or other entertainment. That's what I'm saying, we dude. We just talked about and it. And then we can get like a taxi driver. We could get like a license. Ju- we could, I was just saying like we need to figure out how to monetize our presence. Monetize. I love how he says monetize. Well, we might just do that. Isn't it monetize? It's maybe in some places, we but could all the Smokers sign. Lounge is monetized. Fire down rage for David Allen Smoker. We had zero bleeps last episode. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you guys could. <laughs> well, we're on the board. We're so, on the board. Uh, I'm all God, in on supper club. We're starting a we, supper club. We need to start looking into that. I, I I couldn't be more serious. We need to. I feel like we got enough. Maybe we can take a little bit of bankroll and like front that and make it happen. No need to front it. We'll be fine. That's yeah. what I mean. Like we'll just do it. Yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, Is that? We got some people we can talk to to make it happen. God. Supper Club. Uh, I'm not as excited about the Supper Club anymore after reading David's topic. And I'm oh. ready to move on. Mm. Okay. Wow. Cut him down. Well, Let's I didn't have it. anything else to say either, Big Mace. Let's Go do ahead. it. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was having a conversation with the guys at work the other day and realized I'm an idiot. No, you're the smartest man alive. <laughs> I don't know. So... How would you defend yourself in a shark attack? Like, what would your go-to move be? Like, if you found yourself in the water, in the midst of being attacked by a shark. (laughs) Okay, first off, is it a great white or like a tiger shark? Let's say a great white. How big? I mean, it's not a little one. Well, then there's no chance because they're just going to okay. drag you out to the deep hammerhead. sea and drown you. Small hammerhead. Well, hammerheads won't come up. That I don't know. God I don't damn. know enough about it. See, now I'm GDing. Uh, just a, a a shark. You like? You're not going to give up. You got something to live for. I'm not going to lie. I'm just hoping the shark takes an appendage and then lets me go. Because mm. there's take, no fighting it. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to uh, fix them. This is a guy that's been in the water. As that, if yeah. it is a the nose, dolphin nose of a bottlenose dolphin. And then I'm going to commence to jam and jab as hard as I can into its gills. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I'm going to kick like hell and just start praying. That's what I'm going to do. I just don't think these things, when they go attack people, first off, sneak attack like ninjas. And second off, it's a bite, tear, rip, and then they throw. The ripping and the tearing. Mm. Yeah. You're not going to be able to, hey, come here, shark. Let me get your gills. Ain't going to happen. So I'm a bit embarrassed, and this is what's going to make me look bad, because I'm going to tell you, for the longest time, like, I had never really been to the beach. I've been one time when I was a child. You're going to hate where we're going. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> There's nothing no, to well, do no, no, but no. sit on the beach. Well, what I'm saying is I've never been around the ocean, I guess. 
But since I married in and moved down here, we've been plenty of times going with the in-laws and we Florida and we go down there. You uncultured swine. And so uh, me being me that wants to overthink things, I've had an attack plan in my head. You got a shark attack go bag? Well, a shark attack plan. And it hit me the other day when somebody called me out on it, how terrible of a plan it was. Hold on. Can I ask, how did this come up in normal conversation? Like you're sitting around in the break it's, room. It's shark Week. <laughs> well, somebody did bring up Shark Week. I didn't realize it's Shark Week. I don't watch that. I don't either. I don't, we don't, we're, we're I think Shark we're Week we're lost at Luster about 15 years ago. But I'll just dive right services. into it. I was like, man, I'll tell you what, it's just the size of the shark that makes it a problem. I said, what do you mean? I was like, well, you know, if it's too big a shark, I'm afraid I won't get my arms around to choke him out. <laughs> <laughs> But sharks don't breathe, man. <laughs> like, it didn't matter how little the shark was. I was never, and it never occurred to me until just this last week you, that you can't like, like that was my go-to. I was gonna <laughs> put him in a lock it up in a headlock. Put him in a sleeper hole. <laughs> Say uncle. <laughs> Say uncle. <laughs> they don't breathe though. No. And uh, oh no, they breathe, but they breathe water. <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna try to choke them out, and you can't. <laughs> and uh, I thought maybe there'd be more people that were like, "Yeah, I'll choke that sob out." But uh, <laughs> you were the only one. I think maybe. And somebody looked at you and go, <laughs> "Dave, you idiot! You can't choke them like it's a human." <laughs> I mean, I've worked with a bunch of engineers. I'm I'm an engineer. <laughs> yeah, that's obviously that's what your happened. Obviously, your calculation was off. <sighs> so I, I, was, I, I was really times, hoping everybody would say, "I think a lot." I'll choke them out. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Did. I think you find success if you just. You swing like hell at it. Mm -hmm. You don't worry about where it lands. Try to hit it in the eye, the yeah. nose, the face. The gill. Because then they figure out they don't want to mess with you. And they'll let you go, and maybe you just lose your lower leg. Did you know that somebody told me, which I don't know if this is a fact or not, but somebody said that a shark is more attracted to urine than they are actual blood. Mm. Is that right? You think that's right? I'll sorry if you are rolling over and rub their belly. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just roll them over. Something about them, they stop breathing. Their or... swim bladder. Oh. Yeah. They have a swim bladder. Next time you wrestle a 10 foot great white, see if you can get it to roll over and uh, let me know how it goes. I tell you goes. what, I bet a 10 foot great white and me way similar. No. I bet it's 600 pounds. No, they got to have like pretty hollow bones. Are you no. serious? You know nothing about Are you sharks. you serious? You know absolutely nothing about sharks. You're telling me you're telling me a shark that's four foot longer than I am tall, and all my blubber and my solid ass bones weighs more than three times. I don't know what you got in that pink lemonade and vodka smoke, but it just <laughs> clouding your judgment. A, a fifteen inch fish weighs what five pounds? Yeah, but we're talking about a shark. Mm. What are you looking up so we can... Researchers tracked the brains of great white sharks as this was happening. No reaction from a scientific standpoint says that it is definitely not true that sharks are attracted to urine. <laughs> <laughs> now look up the weight of a 10-foot great white. Okay. Uh, how much does... How much does... 450 to 500. No way. At. No how much does a 10 foot great white shark weigh? 1,000 to 1,700 pounds. I've to I told you. An average adult male great white has a length of about 10 to 13 feet and a weight of 1,000 to 1,700 Where's pounds. Where's all the weight? In other words, a 2,000 pound 15 footer is a fairly normal sized fish. But that's only twice the length of a, a human and a little bit more. Yeah, but be David, like... they're like as big around as this table. Mm. It's They're huge, bud. Like God, they're, It'd they're... be hard to choke one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no way your stubby ass arms and them bitch shins are getting around anything that big. Uh... I just feel like you got to be able to outsmart a shark. They're just a stupid ass. They're the shark. apex predator, man. Of the ocean. Yeah, when you Where's step in. Where's your legs at, Sharky? Yeah, when you walk into the water. Mm -mm. Oh, you're telling me when we go down to that dumpster fire that you're not going to get in the water? Oh, I'll get in the water. And you don't think that if. Yeah, that, but great whites don't come there. The water's too hot. That's right. Well, whatever. Tiger sharks. 
Yeah, caught, how big is a tiger shark? We've caught bulls. We've caught. I mean, they're not going to Oh, those are only this big. It was like three pounders. You're stupid. Thrashers. We there's some. We've seen thrashers down there. A and bunch then, of but they're not going to come up. They're not going to. They're scared of humans. Mm-hmm. They're not going to. Mm-hmm. And they should be. Yeah. Found a dead bonnet head one time. Max did. My son found a dead bonnet head that was probably about a maybe a two footer little guy. It was at night. We were crab hunting. I'm not going to discredit. It. They got some pretty wild teeth on them. Yeah, they just rip. They don't have any fingers. They rip and tear, bud. Well, I mean, your fat ass don't stand a chance. I'm sorry, and I say that in full confidence because neither does mine. Yeah, I'm not even going to. I love dip. you. I love you like a brother. Oh, that's I appreciate. We, we, I appreciate we you. We literally look like a sea lion dying when we're floating in the water. Oh, and now, if you get on one of them boogie boards, you're even worser. Then you then you transform like a into turtle, a, giant into sea a turtle. Manatee. I mean, if you just got to flip him over, I feel like I get on a shark and I can muscle him around. And then what happens when down. he puts that dorsal fin right up your ball sack and you ah, and you're screwed? Is a dorsal fin like the big sharp or something? Yeah, that's bone. No, I and them some bitches are so slick you can you couldn't hold on to them. It's like a greased up hog. Yeah, you ever wrestled a greased you're up hog? You're smoked, bud. No. You're done, Zo. Ain't got a chance. You know what though, smoke? Not to make this whole segment be at a loss, because <laughs> everything you brought up has just been bad for you. I appreciate your optimism and thinking that you could go in there and battle, because that tells me that you got the dog in you. That's right, got that dog in him. You know who else has got the dog in him? Tell me, Maxi Barbershop. Right. Well, I guess that J Maxi does. Yeah. Gotta find that paper. <laughs> the summer heat is fully on and it's miserable. The <laughs> dog days of summer. <laughs> now it's not the time to be walking around with a mop top of hair. Go see our buddy J Maxi at Maxi Barbershop and let him use that sweet vacuum trimmer on your mess of hair this summer. Why, J will get it trimmed up just right. Jay also trims beards, mustaches, ear hair, and any other hair that may grow on or around your head. Located in Huntingburg, Jay has been a supporter of the Wandering Dutchman from the start. Stop in today for all your hair, mustache, and beard trimming needs. <laughs> Tell that old boy <laughs> the Dutchman sent you. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, Wanderers, are you ready to elevate your grilling game to new heights? Then you need to hear about our fantastic sponsor, Southern Indiana Hardwoods. At Southern Indiana Hardwoods, they're passionate about all things grilling. They're your one-stop shop for everything Green Mountain Grills, accessories, and pellets. But there's more. They're also the exclusive manufacturer for Green Mountain Grills brand pellets, ensuring the ultimate grilling experience. So why should you choose Southern Indiana Hardwoods for your next grill? Well, let me tell you. Not only do they offer an extensive selection of -of top-of-the-line grills and accessories, They also provide unparalleled customer service. And here's the cherry on top. Nick Merkley, the grill guru at Southern Indiana Hardwoods, goes the extra mile for his customers. So if you're located in Dubois County, Indiana, Nick will personally deliver any pellet grill to your doorstep absolutely free. No more worrying about transportation logistics. Nick's got you covered. But wait, there's even more. When you mention the Wandering Dutchman, Nick is going to hook you up with a special offer. Buy a grill from Nick at Southern Indiana Hardwoods and you'll receive three free bags of premium Green Mountain Grill brand pellets. It's the perfect way to kickstart your grilling adventures. Uh, Don't settle for anything ordinary. Discover the exceptional quality and service that Southern Indiana Hardwoods provides. Visit their website or give Nick Merkley a call today and take your grilling to the next level. Hey! hey! And we're back. back. Back again. again. Thanks to our the buddies. The Dutchmen are back. Thanks to our buddies. Tell, Tell your friends. We're back. back. And we're back. We're back. Uh, and we're back. As we come back hey, what's in. what's in that jug over there? You ain't using it on Water. Mm-hmm. It's water because he's charred. Uh, just want the folks H2O. at home, the folks at homes, to folks at homes. Folks at home. The glizzy machine was loaded with Philly steak. Philly cheese steak, steak brats, brats tonight from Merkley's and Sons. No Plockman's, no Plockman's Sons. needed. Didn't even need no mustard. They no. were delicious. Yeah. You're some some bitches on some bread. Yeah. No Plockman's needed. Hork them down. They and, were good. And that old glizzy machine just yeah. keeps on rolling, God rolling, rolling, rolling. 
God bless it. Hey, we're getting into hour two, though. Here Mace. we go. Tell us about it, Mace. Ahead, Tell us one the, time. Welcome, 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 welcome back to the second hour of our show. But before we dive in, let me tell you about our sponsor for this hour. Tell me. Once again, it's our friends Catering by Meyer. Mm. I know you may be worried that they're still busy with the Bombers team. Well, Season's guess what? Over. They're not. But put those <laughs> worries to rest. Catering by Meyer is still booking events, and that's a good thing for you. Their menu is excellent, the service is out of this world, and the price is right on the money. Right on the money, honey. It's a no-brainer. If you've got an event coming up where you have to read, you have to feed just a handful or 200, call Catering by Meyer today. The fryers and the grills are ready to be used whenever you call. Give them a holler. Give them a holler over there. Jared and Bubba and tell them the Dutchman sent you. Hell yeah. Yeah, our friends over there at Catering by Meyer, we appreciate them being on board with us. Your next event, whether it's big or small, give them a call and they will take care of you. That's Dave, right. I'm worried about you here an hour or two. Oh, I'm going to pull through just You tired? Well, I'm, I've, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. Yeah. I've had some uh, trials and tribulations that's really... Cut against my mental health. And yeah, it's te- tough. Teas and peas, buddy. And peas, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Sack up and finish strong. I'm just, yeah. I'm just ready to hear your first topic. Uh, Tell me about it. My topic states there's still hope. I have seen yeah. kids ditch fishing. The old ditch fishing for hubcaps. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, David Allen Smoker. <laughs> I mean, that's a hell of a place to find hey, a hubcap. Oh, hey, shoot. Hey, you smart, creative son of a bitch that thought he could wrestle a great white shark. Hey, that might be a shirt idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know Smoke that. ride a, a, a great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> hey, We're going to be millionaires. Liz, if you're listening, if you could draw us yeah, up, yeah, if you could paint us a picture. Paint us a Birmingham there. Of, paint uh, me a Birmingham. David Allen Smoker wrangling a great white shark. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. And ditch fishing for hubcaps. I uh, I was on my way to pick up a kid or drop off a kid or do something in the general area. Your kids, I hope. Of the, uh, of the uh, Huntingburg City Park the other day. And it was in the evening time. Mm-hmm. So all, like, the pool was closed. It was hotter than hell. The park was really not much going on in the park and everything like that. And these two little fellers... They had a spool of fishing line, and they had their bicycles. They had their bicycles, you know, laid off the side of the road and whatnot, and they were standing there by the guardrail, and they were, they had a bucket, mm. and they were fishing. They were fishing off the, di- off, off the bridge. Well, hell yeah. And, I, and they, they didn't have a phone in their hand. They didn't have a uh, cigarette or a... Intravenous needle in their hand, or they didn't. Uh, now hold on, there ain't that many intravenous needles in our county. I don't. They think. weren't running from the cops. They weren't vandalizing anything. They weren't doing anything. They were ditch fishing. I used to ditch fish. Look oh, how you turned out. And I, you know, and it's like I, I think it's something. It's one of, another one of those things where. Like the getting the kids outside mm. and the, and the doing the things like that, you know, kind of unplugging, you know, going for a bike ride, you know, shit like that. I, I like to see that, and I think that's what I wanted to bring up was that it's it's cool to see those reminders that there's still hope. There's still hope that that your kid won't grow up in a peanut butter fort in your parents' basement playing, you know, Call of Duty 15 or whatever the hell the latest and greatest Fortnite. And being nice. Keep Unless the aliens there. come and they're hostile. Yeah. And then we got it. Then then those guys are probably going to excel until they get like a yeah. real gun. Oh, yeah. Face. Yeah. But no, I just, I don't know. That, that I just, it, and, and it doesn't have to be a long topic. It can just be a short one. Well, sometimes a short. But I, I just, I just, I, that was what I wanted to say. I wanted to say that there's still hope because there's kids out there still doing, you know, wholesome things mm-hmm. like just, you know, being kids. Being kids. Can I ask a question, though? Yeah. Pool was closed. Yeah. Nobody in the park, but you're taking your kids to the park. Was there something going on? Baseball. Oh, okay. Softball. Okay. Mm-hmm. Going from there to the, between there and the soccer field. Well, that's, oh, hickory. Well, that's what. <laughs> well, it's aluminum now. Swinging the old aluminum. 
But I, that's I, what I was trying yeah, to no, think. I like just thought maybe you're dropping your kids off at the park to do hoodlum shit while these kids were doing Just want to do hoodlum shit with yeah, my go, friends. Go, go steal uh, hubcaps or yeah. whatever <laughs> dingbat said. Go hubcap fishing. You know, I think... Now, so. speaking of hubcap fishing and ditches, them guys that do that magnet fishing stuff... Oh, we're going to go tangentially here. I think that would be neat. Oh, I throw <sighs> a magnet in the water. Well, but some of them, like when they find like guns and knives yeah. and they call the police, people are like, what are you doing? It's like, yeah. well, we just were magnet fishing. We just found it. Well, mm. stop. Yeah. Like, well, and that's why, you know what? Just don't call the cops. Oh, keep that gun that could solve a cold case from 1993. Throw it back in the river. Yeah. <laughs> just, throw her, just throw her right back in there. Yeah. I don't know. I get it. I get what he's saying. But I, I get, get what, what he's saying, saying yeah. too. Um, no, I think the magnet fishing thing, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, next time you're down the no river, no precious with the metal stick to magnets, though. Well, that's true. I mean, all you're going to find is ferrous metals like steel and pot iron and whatnot. So yeah, you could find a bike or a skillet, but you're not going to find a pot of gold unless they buried that pot in a skillet or a, a bike. skillet or a Dutch oven, perhaps. Now it'd be nice to have a nice Dutch oven. Well, My a Dutch oven, you're going to. Yeah, but you find them in the bottom of the river, and they ain't going to be that good a shape. No. Well, I'm probably going to have to do a little Next work time on we it. go on the road and me and you have to sleep together, I'm going to Dutch oven you. <laughs> Buddy, you Dutch oven me, I swear to God. This is going to be bad. Hey, by the way, I've been talking to our buddy, Uncle Todd. Yeah. And has, he, he, has he responded? He's like, hey, we need to get together again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he was at Potoka Lake for a week. I was, was like, he? Yeah, they, they did a houseboat trip. Mm. I was like, man, you're in our backyard. Yeah. And I was like, you should have called. We could have brought smoke on the wall. Showed you the ropes. Yeah. Brought them some pizzas. Yeah, yeah. we could have. From our friends at Monty. No, but, I, you know, to your topic. Unpaid plug. Yeah, to your topic. If they want to be paid, come, come on, on board. board. But, you know, to your topic, I think there are parents that are raising their children right in this world. And, you, you know, they so. might not I have hope, yeah. they might not have all the fancy things to do. But I tell you what, when it comes to, like, toys and stuff. Our kids play with it when they first get it, and then after that, no. they'd rather play in boxes. Yeah, they'd rather make blanket forts. They'd rather play with anything and everything but the hundreds of dollars of toys that sit in our bonus space. I'm Toy dead. makers are lame. I feel like they're not doing a good enough job. What? Toy, Toy makers, makers are lame. They were doing a better job. Those kids to play with those toys, like the elves. Yeah. Let's say at Christmas time. Yeah. Hmm. Are we going to have a Dutchman Christmas party? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's going to be real close to the Dutchman anniversary party. Yeah. Well, but I figured the Dutchman Christmas party would just be like us and the mm. Mrs. Oh, like did we do friend, that last like year? Like a friend's No, that was a New Year's. No, that was New Year's. Yeah. We'll but a friend we'll of the program, Cody Schneider and his wife, came we'll over with their friends. kids. We'll do a Krieg, friend. Uh, Matt Krieg. Yeah, and... Krieg was here with his lovely bride. He's not mad at us, is he? No, he was just up here the other night. Okay. We went on a. We did a. Uh, actually, for anybody in the hood, we did a neighborhood watch. Went through and checked to be sure everybody was doing okay that night. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, Mace, you got anything else on your topic? Nope. Okay. I just. Yeah, I, it was something that I really like to see. We're going to well, pick up the pace hour, too, boys. I feel like you guys are slacking. Uh, so, the National Corvette Restore. Restoration Society. Oh, I thought I read this and thought maybe that stood for collection. No, I think it was restoration. National collection. No, it was National Corvette Restores or Restoration Society. They were up at the resort this week, and uh, I bet there was lots of New Balances there. Uh, there was a lot of nice. <sighs> they had everything from the '53 Corvette. Which was the first year. To the 23. To the 23 and everything in between. But I tell you what, I saw a lot of cars that were worth a lot. Mm -hmm. And some of them, um, some collections there of the L88s, which is was made by Corvette for just a short period. Mm -hmm. They're about, if you got a true L88, they're about three, three and a half plus million. For a car. Never even heard of it. Well, that's probably why, you know, Dave, that's, that makes the exclusivity of owning one mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. 
So, well, my thought as I was walking through looking at all these machines that you couldn't, a lot of them probably six figure. Yeah, completely you know, out of reach. Yeah, out of, you know, touch with what, you know, podcast money, maybe there's a chance. But I thought if money wasn't an option and you were to have a collection of something, and it could, it could be anything, but I mean, I'm talking like there's only a certain handful of people that have this collection. Like you and Bezos are buddies because you both collect you know, insert whatever it may be. And I didn't know what it would be. I mean, I didn't know if it would be an antique car collection, if it would be an antique gun collection, you know, if you would collect other things. But I'm talking about not like, oh, I got a stamp collection, which I guess stamps could be expensive. <laughs> sure. but, Baseball cards, anything like that. Yeah, but I'm talking about like you have a collection where like you take it at somewhere and people are like, oh, Oh wow! Do you want to know something that I never knew was a thing, collection-wise, until not really that long ago? Rock stamps, comic books, where Mar- you going? marbles. Oh yeah, no. I, I did I, you know that there are like high-end marbles that yeah. are like mm. worth thousands of dollars? Yeah. There's a lot of creativity and artistic touch that goes into making a glass blown marble before a certain point in time. Yeah, yeah. my dad's got some jars of marbles. Well, just collected over the years from whatever. Sure. Some would say that I have lost my marbles. Mm. No, but like you're that all kid there. from Peter Pan. Yeah. So, well, what would you collect if you had money was no object? Mm. Acres of land. Is that not a real thing? It's I mean, kind of a lame answer, but it's yeah. A real it's, thing. I mean, it is a real thing. It is a lame answer because he's not participating, Dave. <laughs> He's not participating. You have to get more creative than that. Uh, there, big really game. super duper raunchy porno books. Like with pictures or without? No, that's terrible collection. But I know people that do collect like uh, Playboys, Playboys, like yeah. real Playboys. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. I don't know, man. I used to collect Hot Wheel cars. Oh, uh, my God rest his soul, but my cousin's, my cousin's late husband who... Uh, Tragically passed away mm-hmm. during our uh, yeah we were yeah it was during the show we recorded we talked about it yeah but uh he has or he 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 it's, he had it's not his anymore but now it's still it's 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 his wife's my cousins but they he has a boatload of Hot Wheel cars that are in the package oh. in boxes and everything like that and unfortunately. That was a hobby that he didn't he didn't share with many people. Like like so like he we don't know who to call or or who to have look at those or what you know find out what they're worth or anything like that. So that's kind of one of those tough spot deals. You know, it's like we don't know really much about it. But I know people that collect Hot Wheels, Barbie dolls, like the the toy stuff. You know, American Girl dolls. Those things are stupid expensive. But I don't know, man. I don't know what I would... Uh, blood diamonds. Oh, I bet that'd be worth some money. Yeah, collect those, like blood diamonds or... Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Tie-dye tapestries. I don't know, man. I, I can think of a lot of things that I would collect. I feel like if I had all the money in the world, I would collect uh, extraterrestrial artifacts. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's a waste of money. Oh, bullshit, man, because I think that mm. by gravity, there's lots of signs. Sas- Sasqu- <laughs> Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Sasquatch uh, hair. Oh, man. I, could find I just saw a TikTok about a gas squatch. It was <laughs> it was like a gas station. Are you playing footsie with me, big guy? I say gas squatch, and this guy gets all footsie feely. <laughs> but it was a giant Sasquatch sign, and he was holding the gas can. Oh, he damn. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. But no, I'd collect extraterrestrial artifacts. Yeah. You know, pieces you of know UFOs. yours? Yeah. I I would I would have an antique or I would have like a a rare and this might be surprising, but I would have a rare shotgun collection. Like over under side by sides like nice, mm-hmm. you know, different kind of I think because I like the look of them, mm-hmm. but I would think like a gun collection mm. would be a blast. What do you think, out of all of those nice fancy shotguns, what what do you think would be the ones that you would want to gravitate towards? Like style or what? No brand. I don't know. I know you don't. 
Yeah, I know. I you're to you're trying you to minimize it, wow. but you're over there talking about freaking Hot Wheels. So before you throw you rocks How about a Hot Wheel at, car? Uh, uh, I'll go collect land. I think if I were to <laughs> Hey, go when was first, the last time you took somebody to 1025 and said, look at my land I've collected? But if you Never. kept Big Bird feathers from live performances, because you know Big Bird's going to drop a feather or two every time, that's worth something. And if you can point out that I it's like get a big a bird kernel. ass feather, I want to get shake a, a tail feather. I want a kernel of elephant shit from every hottie shrine circus I've ever been to. Oh man, elephants are crazy. Yeah. Did you know that elephant? The, <laughs> they, have, so they have tits. Yes. <laughs> you sent it to me. Yes, dude. Elephants. The female elephant only has. They have two, two mammaries, mammaries like but a, they're between their front legs like a human. Yeah. Like, like ele- every other mammal has them back in their back legs or underneath somewhere. But I tell you what, you see one of these gal elephants that's nursing, and it's like, whoa, girl, put your shirt on. Yeah. Because like, I'm telling you, these elephants, eh? Yeah, hon, get your tits <laughs> out. There's, like, some, there's some pretty thirsty a, bitches out there just full, getting them tits out. They have a full uh, array of a uh, full rack. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. Browning Satori's. <laughs> Browning Satori's. Okay. Those are what you need to go after first. Okay. In I'll every in every caliber. Oh. Starting at what? What's the smallest shotgun? Four ten. And then what? B twenty. No, yeah. Is it? Is it? Twenty eight. There you go. Twenty eight, twenty, twelve, ten. No, six forgot and sixteen. Eight. Forget yeah, I forgot sixteen. 16. Yeah, it's no big deal. Nobody yeah, cares about sixteen. Games. You're right. It's very. It's and twenty eight is very uh, uncommon as well. Because you either go from a four ten to a twenty. Yeah, and then most keep a twelve. Yeah, four ten home defense though. You buy those shells for that. Oh, those are and babies would make a mess out of somebody. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So thanks for participating. And that'd be messed up like elephant tits. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys go ahead and Google that. It's wild. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, it's my turn. Yes, it is sir. your turn. All right. We're going to try to get this one across the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All the vodka. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Would growling still be intimidating? <laughs> Apex predators didn't do it. So, for instance, if bears squeaked like a squirrel... <laughs> Would a squeak noise scare you in the night? <laughs> I mean, no, just, Dave. <laughs> but it, but growling's the- only scary because typically it only happens because something's going to eat you. Uh, you hear a growl, then you get eaten. Yeah, but it's a, a growl is more of a warning because of what we know. But what if a T Rex went? But they say T Rexes sound like turkeys, right? No, no, I don't think anybody ever said that. No, I really think there's like, nobody living to this day that has any idea what the hell a Tyrannosaurus Rex sounded. We like. assumed it sounded like, yeah. but there's no way they have no clue. But they're birds. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're closely related. They, it's like the T Rex was the they were now raptors were raptors to birds. yeah they were the ones that were bird like velociraptors yeah. and things then Whatever. you got baronosauruses and they just ate leaves yeah. you think they squeaked like squirrels that's not a squirrel what do you think that shark what noise would that shark make when you put it in a headlock <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the whole idea of the growl is as a warning, and that's how nature's made it and created it. You're so, missing the thing, man. That's what I'm saying. We've not hit a topic in hour two on point the entire time. Why that's start true. now? That's true. What? So what was it? I'm if, just saying. Would growling you think still be if, intimidating if Apex But if you look at what I actually typed, it? I didn't write it all down. But if I typed in there, what if bears? What if bears did that? What is that? That's a squirrel. That's a squirrel. They don't squeak. That's they squ- bark. Yeah, you've never heard a squirrel bark? Yeah, well, obviously you've heard it now. It's on the show. That's not copyright, is it? Prove where it's from. So what if a bear or a lion did that? You'd be scared of it. If I If I physically saw... The bear or the lion, then yes, I would be. 
Like if it's not something like if we're playing, like I'm in the, the deeper dating into game. the pool, buddy. I'm in the deeper into the pool. You're up here in the shallow waters. Yeah, getting I'm, your calves wet. I, well, I'm just saying if that's the way the sharks don't get you. <laughs> if historically a bear or a Tyrannosaurus Rex sounded like that, we'd be scared of that sound, right? That sounds like a wounded rabbit. What is that? A wounded rabbit? No. Squirrel. Tyrannosaurus Rex? It's a squirrel. Yeah. It's a regular ass gray squirrel. Oh, be damn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, that's not intimidating at all. No, but that's but what why if squirrels aren't that? apex predators. Huh? But you, what if bears sounded like that? Would growling still be. I don't think a bear growl as is as bothersome to me as like a uh, an angry pit bull or like an angry chihuahua. Like one of them little... You're scared of a chihuahua? Oh, God, yeah. Them little nipping so some mean. bitches. Really? Justine, yeah. I bought Justine one when she was... Or she bought one. Oh, God, I'm not going to take credit for that. I took her to go get one when yeah. we were 16 years old. Yeah, and, that, love. and that son of a bitch just died like... Couple years ago, two years, maybe not even now. It shouldn't even be. Where'd that stay? Just her parents, Mason, uh, that little blue chihuahua. It was blue. Yeah, like blue. Yeah. Well, like I got Meko Mekalob Ultra. No, it was gray, like a blue. Gray, what they call blue, it blue steel. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dave, I, I appreciate your topic here, <laughs> but <laughs> but but I think you're off base. That's what's coming. No, I think you're right on the money. You're I don't, right. If it, it would be just like the Helen Keller thing. Oh, we got to get into that one of these days. It would be like, so if, if we didn't know, <laughs> like if a bear came up to you and said meow. Meow. Yeah. Like if a big gnarly ass bear just like was all gnarled up and. Meow. Yeah. You'd be scared of a I'd meow. I'd be scared shitless. Yeah. But what if like a little, little mouse. Would you be scared of growl? No, because it's a mouse. <laughs> I'm scared of that growl. Because he did the whole oh, face in the face. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to change our recording dates. <laughs> Days were dates, not all day. I love it. I love every minute of it. And so will the listeners. Because uh, you're speaking, they and they love that. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's well, good. I think... Um, it's episode 40. We could have had a baby. But if... It's true. If you... If... To to maybe clarify your question here and try to save this, could be like rearranging the seats on the Titanic deck of the Titanic. But if do we have zero knowledge of what apex predators sound like now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying if an apex predator, as you know it, as you have not even just educationally yeah, but biologically, yes. what he's went, saying is is if a if a if a bear. If At you, always, if you meow. if you me and Dave were in the woods and this big ass. Sal Grizzly comes up and is getting ready to eat his face off. And the, the noise that she generated prior to this eating was that. Then you'd be scared. Then we would be scared shitless yeah, of that disagree. noise. Yeah. But, but if it I'd feel it went. you like, oh, those crazy ass crickets. Yeah. Okay. I don't disagree. Yeah. But Just I know a weird thing I was thinking of the other. I know that we would be safe with Dave because if he can wrestle a great white in the water, he can wrestle a bear. You know, old, my old buddy Clyde, I was one he's the one that told me, he said, Hey, you can't choke out a shark, man. They don't breathe. Maybe we should bring <laughs> But he did bring up a point like <laughs> Poor Clyde. <laughs> I've brought it up. I'm pretty sure and I've told them that gosh, this could be its own topic. I may not just save it. Keep it in the tank, man. All right, we'll save it. Let's move on to our favorite part of the show. Yeah, our favorite part. <laughs> our best one for all the meat enthusiasts. It is time for the Merkley and Sons Choice Cuts Questions of the Week for the Fellas, sponsored by our friends at Merkley and Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. Mace, I'm going to take you down memory row for a little bit. Do it. Take me, Tell me on country road to the place I belong, West Virginia. 
Mountain Mason, take me home. My fondest memory of Merkley and Sons was going over with my dear mother on Saturday mornings to get what meat products we needed for the Lindemann household. The store was always packed, much like it is today, and I can remember when they were cash or check only. A fond memory for sure. I also remember the tradition of T-bone steaks on Christmas Day. Those were purchased right there at Merkley and Sons. Also on Christmas Day was breakfast featuring the center cut ham fried from, you guessed it, Merkley and Sons. They've been a proud family tradition in the Lindemann household for quite some time. Let them become a tradition of yours today. Go see them and tell them the Dutchman sent you. Hell yeah. Who's on tap this week? So I got a couple that I'm going to throw out. This one we've had for a while. It comes from Tammy Siddons. Oh. Tammy wrote in back in March. Hello, Wandering Dutchman. So. Hello. On an interstate highway, travelers are supposed to stay in the right lane, mm-hmm. except to pass. Mm-hmm. Now for the question. On 231, where it's two lanes going south and two lanes going north, are travelers to stay to the right, except to pass, or can they travel along in the left lane? It's not posted stay right except to pass or slow traffic stay to the right. What do you guys do when traveling along a two or four lane road? I put her in the do left you lane and let her hammer. Or the right. My husband and I banter back and forth about this whenever we travel on 231. He says it's not the interstate. There's on and off exit ramps on both sides. It's not posted the state of the right. Therefore, you can travel along in the left lane. What are your thoughts on this? Like I said, I, I, I get in the left lane, let her eat until there's somebody behind me that's letting her eat a little harder. Well, then I'll I'll get over and let them go on by, and then I'll jump back over in the left lane and continue on down the line. Well, I'm a firm believer in firm. You're going to skip smoke? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Go ahead, Smoke. Go with me. I mean, well, uh, Smoke, I didn't know what you were doing over there. You were wrestling ice cubes. Well, Tammy, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> if I'm heading southbound on 231, and I'm going faster than the folks in front of me, means I'm in the right-hand lane, I'm going to pass them on the left. Then I'm going to go back to the right-hand lane because it's the appropriate thing to do. I think you only stay in the left lane if you're passing everybody and there ain't an opportunity to get back in the right-hand lane. Even if you got a left-hand turn lane like you do on 41 north and south, and while you stay in the right lane until it's time to get to that turn lane and you get over there, but you leave the left lane for the passing and for the emergency vehicles. So that's where I stand. You just stay in the right because it's right. <laughs> oh, David Smoker. Oh, oh, damn. Uh, yeah, I don't care if it's a interstate, a four lane, two lane, six lane, eight lane, a million lane. If you are not passing somebody, you stay in the right lane. You got angry. If you're hanging out in the left lane, tooling your thumbs, checking yeah. your Facebook, Pisses seeing how the weather watching is. Watching a movie. Watching a movie. Watching a whatever movie. Whatever it is, get out of the way. If you're not passing, you're in the right lane. I mean, I just think it is. And yeah. I don't think there's even a distinction to be drawn with whether it's interstate or non-interstate. I think the law in the state of Indiana is if there's two lanes, you st- yeah. and if you're not in the lane, you know, like you cannot uphold slower traffic on the vehicles, left lane. Slower vehicles and trucks, it says always keep right. Use right lane. Yeah. So I think that's just where we're at on that. Uh, next question uh, comes from Miss uh, Stacy Volker. Oh. Stacy uh, wrote in, actually, and this is uh, very recent, because I think it's a good topic to get to because we're real close to this happening. Hey there, just thought of a topic you all could wonder about. How do you all feel about school running all year long versus having a summer break? What? Year-round school or do the schedule they've got now? Uh, now that I'm not in school anymore and I'm a parent of three kids in school, I want them to go all year round. So when I was coming up, there were some schools that apparently did Trimesters? This. Yep, when I was in 4-H. 
And it seemed to be that, you know, like instead of a spring break and chasing fall break them, for a week. Chasing them buckle bunnies. That's right. Uh. You'd have a couple, you know, every uh, quarter or yeah. whatever, you'd have like yeah. a two-week break. I think that's probably a good way to keep kids on track, uh, you know, uh, for good habits. So I think that I'd do all year round school if I could pick. I think now kids have way too many breaks. I mean, you start school here like first week of August. Yeah. And you're still running until the end of May. Yeah. Where are you saving any time? You give these kids a full week in the fall, two weeks at Christmas, full week in the spring, plus every other break you get throughout there. The best class schedule I was on was in law school. You got there, you went 15 weeks straight, you were done. You had two weeks off in between semesters, except for one semester you had three weeks off. Right. Like, how you doing? Keep it moving. You know what I mean? That's how we did it. So I like it. I like it. I, I think if you could uh, be efficient and give kids more break, it would be worth it. If not, uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, I've got another set here. Let's do it. And it's a and it's actually a relative of the show. Oh. You want to take any guesses who? Aunt Perry. No. Nope. Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, well, I already seen your phone. Oh, jerk. Sorry. All right. Cody Masoner. Oh, brother of the show. Baby, our, baby bro. Our Arkansas connection down there. Yeah. We And we're growing in Arkansas. That's right. He's got a few buddies down there. We've That's sent some stuff. We've right. said hi. You passed through Arkansas, through Missouri. We got some friends in Missouri. Kids are yep. going down there next week. Oh, fun, fun, fun. So, questions from Solo? Cody Masoner. Yeah. You and the missus. Wow, he's brave. Going on a no. trip. Oh. And you're driving. You have two options to drive. You going for comfort or fuel mileage? <laughs> he knows me better. He knows me better than this. And he knows that he's a comfort guy, too, because he's got a... He, <clears throat> he bought mom's escape. And that that bastard, he he never drives that thing home. So he's always driving his truck. So I'm the same way. I'm going with comfort, bud. Comfort or fuel mileage? Comfort. Yeah, I'm comfort all the way, too. Yeah. I'll pay that little bit extra. All expenses paid, seven-day vacation, anywhere you want to go, where are you going? Jamaica. Jamaica. Never been, but that's where we're going for our first one. So. Oh, is that where? Are we? Yeah, we're all going. We're going to Jamaica? God damn it. I hope so. Uh, yeah. I think I would do... Like a Grease Island thing. What a weirdo. What? Well, you see them famous people go to the Greece, the Greek islands for a while, and it looks pretty and nice. You know what else looks pretty nice? Jamaica. Yeah, well, I mean, I just Whatever. wanted to be different. I didn't want oh, to think you, Jamaica. You go on to Greece. You go on the to The wild Greece. women in Greece or Jamaica? Jamaica. Uh-oh. I mean, Ripping I, in the tear. I like bacon as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to go to Greece. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what that's got to do with the price of corn and whatever that saying is. If you could have a meet and greet and hang out with a band and hang out with for a day with any musician or band, who would it be? If you could have a meet and greet and hang out for a day with any musician or band, who would it be? Wow, that was a good yawn. Man, I don't know, dude. Skip me. Oh, you can't no, we can't do that. Because I haven't thought of mine yet. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That's tough. I think, can I, can, we can discuss it a little bit. Yeah. I think you're going back generations. I think your main, you know, musicians now, they're all about healthy lifestyles and this, like, if you're going to have a day and hang out all with somebody. All right, I'm going to hang out with Snoop Dogg. Oh. George Jones. The possum? <laughs> that mamma jamma partied. Yeah. I bet that probably would be a wild time. I bet you wouldn't show up again for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> they call me no show Jones, buddy. Uh, uh, Bo Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, that would be a good one. I would like to think maybe back into the the days of like Elvis. Well, maybe Elvis, but like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Ooh. like some of those yeah. jivey little parties where next thing you know you're taking a little dab of something and you're seeing 
a yellow school bus that's not really driving through the living room, driving through the living room, and it like Lucy, yeah, in the sky would be with something diamonds. with diamonds. Would be something Maxwell's like that. Maxwell's silver hammer. Yeah. So that is the Merkley and Sons Choice Cuts questions of the week for the fellas. The fellas. We did three in there. We got them in there. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate them. Everything Keep sending them. We get some new ones. Uh, we've got some new ones recently, which is good. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get to them. So, and if we've missed them, resend them because we will get to them. Now it's time for the Let the Dutchman Be Your DJ. And DJ. we're nearing about 100 followers on that bad boy, yeah. uh, which is pretty good for a little music list. Mace, who do you have this week? I'm actually going in a different direction than I have in the past. Oh. I'm going to take her down down the country road here a little bit. Nice. Which doesn't really happen. Take me home. Uh, I heard a catchy little jingle on the radio today that I haven't heard in quite some time. and it's a, it's Last a, night I let the liquor talk. <laughs> it's not that. It's oh, okay. actually a uh, catchy little tune by a band by the name of Montgomery Gentry. And it's called... Hillbilly shoes. Ooh, nice. And then after that, we were talking about the old uh, possum, old George Jones there. I'm actually going to have to go with the one and only Mr. King George, George Strait, and its song called Give It Away. Just give it away. And then switching gears once again. Another catchy little tune, uh, one of them that was kind of like a one-hit wonder. It's kind of lived the test of time. It's one that everybody knows the words to when it comes on. It's by a band by the name of The Outfield, and it's called Your Love. Josie's on a vacation far away. na 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 na. Wow. Na 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 na. Little bit older. I just wanna use your love tonight. That one's it. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the one, it. boys, right there. All right, yeah. Smoke Dragon, what you got? Well, I'm gonna start off here. I've changed it up a little bit too. We're gonna start off with some Kid Rock. A little tune he's got called uh, "Low Life, oh. Living the High Life." Oh, Mr. Rock. Then we're going to go on to a little group. Uh, it's the Casey Donahue Band. And this uh, particular little ditty is called White Trash Story. And then we're going to wrap it up with some William Elliot Whitmore singing A Good Day to Die. Oh, yeah. Interesting. We'll have to check them out. I'm yeah. not familiar It'll with be them. on the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, but damn. <laughs> All right, Casey, yeah, what you got, pal? Doing. What you got? Uh, a little song called Red Daisy by Mr. Billy Strings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another song called Life Ain't Fair and the World is Mean by Mr. Sturgill Simpson. Why don't you slow down one time? <laughs> uh, Red well, we got him on the drive there, Bubba. Daisy. Yeah, I got that one. Billy Strings. Life Ain't Fair. Fair and the World is Mean. The Sturge. Sturgill Simpson. And I'm going back to my buddy, Paul Cawthon. Oh. Holy Ghost Fire. You might say he's got the Holy Ghost Fire. And those are my three, gentlemen. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, that list is good. It's growing and everything that's good about it. But now we reach. I got to close one out of right. <laughs> Smoke is on one. That's okay. Smoker's that's Lounge is rocking. Uh, don't be upset that it's over. Just be glad it happened. Be glad That's it happened right. for another week. 40 weeks, fellas. All you wonders out there been this... tuning in. You know, we got uh I've been looking at the numbers again just for whatever reason. I think we're at 468 on YouTube. We got around 400 and Oh, sorry about that, folks. Uh 450 or so on the Spotify neck of the woods. Uh, and iTunes just alone, we're another 430. You know, we're just out there and everybody's listening, tuning in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. It is the last pass. Brought to you by our friends at Hof Outdoor Power. This month, I wanted to talk to you a little about a little bit about my experience at Hof Outdoor Power. Tell us all again. again. Tell you. Let me tell you about my experience. Tell you about it. Well, go ahead, Smoke. <laughs> oh. No, <We're>, no. <laughs> so the wife and I just got married, built a house. On the 20 acres we bought south of Holland. We needed a tractor and we needed one fast. Headed over to see my old buddy Brad at Hope Outdoor Power. 
Told him what I was in the market for, something used, something reasonably priced. He put me on to a nice little BX2200 with the three-cylinder diesel in it. Baby was a workhorse. Plowed snow, mowed grass, and pulled the old brush hog for a little bit. Once we finally established some grass around there up on the hill, we needed a different type of mower so we'd get the job done quick. The missus and I headed over to Hof, and good buddy Jared set us up with a nice zero-turn mower with the 60-inch deck. Again, treated like family. They've made customers for life out of us in the Lindemann household. Share your testimonial with us today so we can tell the fellows over at Hof how much they do for us. And, uh... What you, it's a good drawing over there. Mm-hmm. Last pass. Um, Give me what you got. It's hot. Stay hydrated. It's hot, Don. We're going to the Strassen Fest car show. We're going to the Mosquito Fest. Yeah. So when you're listening to this Friday, the following day, Saturday, August the 5th, we will be at the Strassen Fest car show the show shine presented by the holland legion riders our buddies at the holland legion uh we'll be at the schrader sports complex from 12 to 2 and uh we may or may not have a little swag uh we may have a little swag with us over there so very little bit yeah so come on out and see us it's gonna be hot we'll be under the tent uh Having some beverages, sitting in front of a fan, mm-hmm. and uh, we're just going to hang out, see the cool cars. And other than that, man, that's all I got. It's hot. Stay hydrated. Smoke Daddy. It's been 40 weeks. Uh-huh. 40 weeks ago. Amen. Well, probably 50 weeks ago, we sat down, the three of us here decided this was going to be a thing, and then we kicked it around for a few weeks, and we finally decided to get going. And... uh a lot of me is real surprised the three of us have showed up every day, every week for 40 weeks. And what is even more mind-boggling is that all of you have shown up every week for 40 weeks, and we just appreciate the shit out of it. Uh, it's been a real busy spring and summer, and I, we've, we've learned some things. So we're going to do better, get better. We got that one-year bash coming up here in November, which sounds like eons away, but it'll be here. Like we're talking about today, it'll be here tomorrow. So we can't wait to see you. We'll keep you in tune to all these uh, live things we got going on and events we're going to be at. Come see us. Get to know us. That way at that one-year bash and everybody's out there and we're all having a good time and celebrating, we can be already past the hellos and who are you is just down to the nitty-gritty party. Hell yeah. Uh, Yeah, I tell you what. It has been a good stretch, a good run. It's been busy. It's God, that sounds negative. <laughs> it's been a good run. <laughs> Are you quitting? Uh, never, never going out. Blood in, blood out. Uh, but we'll say that um, really, truly, just uh, you know, it's been very good so far. It's kind of nice to been able to catch my breath. Busy with rolled right into baseball and then with baseball getting everything finalized for mom's uh foundation tournament and then you know finishing up class and doing all that stuff and kids growing up and getting ready and back to school and uh it was kind of nice just to have a couple evening at, evenings at home with the missus it and is nice. um you know don't get to do that very much but uh you know i uh, i just you know big just thank you oh yeah to the wanderers out there um you know we've got a good head of steam we've got uh, i promise you we've got some in-depth coming up we're gonna sit down with some folks and interviews and uh broaden out there and be out there and i think we've recognized that we've got to do that a little bit but uh you know we appreciate those that uh support us and that listen every week and um you know we love it when you share it and somebody likes it that we don't know who they are uh that's cool um, but it's, uh, the one thing I wanted to say, if you ordered merch and you have not gotten it yet, reach out, let us know because we will inquire, we will make it work. We will get it figured out for you. Our like, friend, our friend, Miss Carol down at Woods, Woods, uh, Brandon by Woods actually stopped me on the road the other day 
and said, hey, there's just a few people that haven't come down to pick up their stuff yet. So if you haven't got it, they still have it. It's yeah. not too late. Yeah. Just give those fine folks at Woods Printing a call, and uh, we'll arrange. Uh, we'll help you get it or whatever. Whatever it takes. Whatever we'll we can do. And we're working on another merch line. Uh, we are going to get that kicked out and get rolling for this fall. Uh, we got be some me riding a vodka bottle that says he's on one, or riding a great white shark. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I'm happy to do it with these two dum dums. It's a blast. We have fun. We love the support. It truly is a family environment around here. And with that, I say Dutchman, Dutchman out. out.